here we go. Today, going to be a great show. Welcome to the Canine Man Show. I am Hector Hernandez with First Class Dog Training. When I started doing this show, this topic today, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of information on fireworks and dogs. It blew my mind. So here I'm thinking it's going to be an easy show. Kristen Foster, thank you. <laughs> you suggested it last week, and I think it was a good suggestion. Uh, time permitted it. Uh, good timing. Got 4th of July coming up. Uh, the first time fireworks were uh, shot off were what? 1777, right? July 4th. A year after 1776, the Independence Day. So that was the first time, and it's been tradition ever since. Loud. Now, not only is this going to help on 4th of July, we also shoot fireworks at, on what, Memorial Weekend? On other times. Just never know. So it's good. It's good to find out what to do and or your dog's threshold, your dog's threshold on how much he can handle. And we'll talk about that. Now, this is not a show on thunderstorms. Uh, so, Carrie, I did say that you got some good tips on this. If you're watching, Carrie, you got some good tips that I'm going to give you. But thunderstorms is going to be a separate show. This is fireworks. This is situational. You know when you may anticipate the fireworks occurring. It doesn't have to be, you know as well as I do, they may not happen on the 4th of July. Heck, they'll probably start happening now. They're probably happening now, which I should have, in theory, I should have had this class probably, what, last month in May. So anyways, we're on with the show. Fireworks and dogs. I'm on again at 7 tonight. I'm on again at 7 tonight, questions and answers. Unless somebody like Kristen Foster comes up with a good show topic, then I got to do it. Uh, so welcome today to my mental health day. Thank you for being part of my mental health day. In that day, I do things that relax me. I do things for others. I do things to fill my soul. I do things to take stuff off my plate just to ease my mind. And part of it is helping others is what I love to do. I was on the phone this morning with somebody and by the time we got done, she acts, no, I don't say accidentally. I like, I like to make my clients feel really good about when they're talking to me. She got done. She told me she loved me. Uh, it was kind of funny because she'd never even met me. I've never met her neither. But what's nice is when she called me back and she tried to qualify. I said, no, 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 don't qualify this. I understand. My job is to make you feel very good about your issue, to, make, to motivate you that, that your dog is not a lost cause. And because I made you feel so good, sometimes it comes out that way. It comes out with men sometimes when I'm talking on the phone with them. That's a good, that's a compliment to me, you guys. You accidentally said I love you before you hung up. That's how I want to make you feel. All right, I love people more than dogs. Fireworks today is going to be a good too. If you're a breeder, if you're a breeder, there are some things you can do to get puppies acclimated. I'll tell you one test that I do is I will take a small balloon and I will let the dogs pop it and see which dogs are afraid of it, which dogs don't care about it, which dogs avoid it, which dogs, you see what I mean now? Now you can actually do the temperament tests for loud noises when they're puppies to determine how their nerves are, determine what you're going to do, if they're shy, if they're timid, if they're strong-willed. I mean, you can start seeing that when you add stress, when you add stress to them. And that's just one test, breeders, that I do. A little balloon, let them play. So hopefully that helps you guys. That way you guys will know which dog is a good hunting dog, which dog isn't. Now, there is a period in the dog's time, there is a period in the dog's time, some dogs go through it. It's called the fear stage. It could happen. To me, in my empirical knowledge, it's happened between five months and eight months, like during the adolescent age. It happens between five months and eight months. The dog can be perfectly sound, 
all of a sudden it goes through a little fear stage. Or it's, it could be per nothing happened to it, and then boom, it goes into a fear stage. Now, fear is different than avoidance. If you have a harness on your dog and you're exposing it and it doesn't want to conquer its small stresses, it could turn into avoidance. This is why I, I don't prefer the harness after five months. Now you know why. See, I'm trying to prevent a problem from happening. I'm trying to prevent it, and then I'm trying to stop it. So I don't put the harness on a dog after five months because of that. I want them to conquer whatever they're stressing. But there's that fear stage. So if you have a dog around between five to seven months right now, make sure that you go through some of these things that I'm going to talk about because a traumatic experience can cause a traumatic issue for the rest of their life. When I, when I got my dog, he was about four, four and a half, five months old, Malo. I made sure between five months and seven months, nothing traumatic happened. I just stayed in the side of air. I didn't, he didn't go through a fear stage, but I didn't know because I didn't know what he was going to go through. So I just stayed in the side of air and didn't make something really loud. Didn't do something really loud. Didn't startle him. So very important. If you have a dog in that age, make sure you do some of these things that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Very, very important. Now. Now, to my audience, thank you for being here. Your time is the most valuable thing you can give me. Nothing, nothing can pay you for that time. All right? Joe Trescott, I'm glad you're here. Christian Foster, I'm glad you're here. You're the one who made me do this show. Well, you didn't make me. You suggested it. Uh, anyways, Tina Hines, thank you. Can hear you over the fireworks. Well, that's okay. I was just talking about the fireworks. Anyways, uh, Hector Hernandez, man, with a kind... Hey, thank you, Patty. Of course I love you, my friend. Of course. Uh, hey, Sharon, as I know many with dogs. Yes, thank you, Tina. Thank you. Make sure it's really good, you guys. I'd really appreciate you share my videos uh, with people. You got to share. You don't have to like it. Just share it and help other people. Very, very important. I'm not getting anything out of it except the ripple effect of starting others. Some of the flyers that I posted on my, on my, um, on my Facebook account on first class dog training, I mean, they're being shared all over the country. So I had no idea with some of these flyers that I'd be helping so many people. There's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come. I got a huge list of things that I think, I think should be shared out there. Uh, Darlene, hello from Max and Tinkerbell and me. Max doing pretty good and Tinker is starting to listen to. <laughs> I thought it'd be the other way around. I thought it'd be the other way around, Darlene. Don't think I haven't forgotten about Max and Tinkerbell. But that's good to hear. Michael Butts, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Rochelle uh, Murphy, thank you for being here. Uh, Nicole Kritzak, thank you. There's Lisa Riley. All right, Sarah, Sarah Cozell. Thank you for being here. I'm going to be doing some talks down in that area. I got them scheduled. I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to be posting my talks uh, as, I, as I get them on my, on my uh, Facebook account. So if anybody wants to come and watch, they can come as my, uh, as my guest. Uh, anyways, I'm going to be doing the post office tomorrow in Grand Rapids. And then all next week, all next week is a post office in the morning in different parts of Michigan all of next week. So you, you'll, get, you'll get to see some of my posts. Pretty hilarious. Cheryl Anderson, thank you for being here. Cheryl Anderson, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Audrey Anderson, thank you for being here. Tim Woods, I hope you're still watching, Tim. My high school buddy. Uh, Tori Mellon, thank you for, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, Terry McCardle, thank you for being here. Daniel Malone, Danelle Malone, thank you. And then Wes Rademacher, Thank you for being here. Let me go down to the bottom here. Will you have time to address how to help dog recover if they find? Yes, I have that in. I have that in my show right now, Kelly Klein, how to get them to recover. Now, I don't go into the desensitization process because I don't believe in it, to be honest with you. I don't believe in it. And, and, I'll, and I, I wish I had time to qualify it. Um, the difference between playing it on the video, playing it on the radio, playing it on your stereo versus playing uh, at, versus in it being real, totally two different things. 
I could play gunfire and fireworks on my speakers as loud as I can be. My dog doesn't care. Have it be real? It's a huge difference. We're undermining their intelligence, all right, if that's the case. So, but I will talk about that. Uh, Barbara Ellen's here. Thank you for watching, Barbara Ellen. Thank you. I uh, love watching these on my lunch break. You bet, Travis Gibson. I'm going to go a little bit over your lunch break today, Travis, unless you can take a, long, a longer lunch break, but it's going to be a good one. And I know, I know I've had a few uh, text messages that you guys are listening to me during your workouts. I appreciate that. So if you're running, giddy up, run faster. <laughs> I know if you guys are, watch, are listening to me while you're working, I appreciate you dedicating your time to me. I want you guys to learn something. Let's talk about fireworks before I go on and on about other stuff. If you know me, I just can't stop. Now, let's talk about fireworks. One thing that we often overlook, let's forget about fireworks right now. Let's talk about the dog. One thing that we often overlook is ear infections. We often overlook ear infections. How in the, you know what, do you expect the dog to handle the loud noises with an ear infection? Do you realize how many people I speak to on the phone and then I tell them, did your dog have an ear infection? And they're like, what, what do you mean? I just took him to the vet. Well, show me a picture of your dog's ear, the inside of it. And then they send me a picture. I said, listen, go back to the vet. I'm not saying it was a good vet or bad vet. I'm saying they probably just didn't really observe the dog. But if your dog's shaking his head a lot, if your dog is itching his ear a lot, if there's a little redness in there, come on, people. And you expect these dogs to handle a fireworks? Not going to happen. It affects their hearing, their vision, their smell, and their taste. Tell me an ear infection is not going to cause some serious traumatic issue if you got an ear infection and then you start hearing fireworks. Dogs hear, they don't listen. They hear the fireworks and they attach it to pain. They attach it to pain. You think it's going to help him for the rest of his life? Absolutely not. Make sure this dog is medically cleared. Or if, if you don't have time or the vet doesn't have time to look at the ears, you look at the ears. Your job is to observe your dog, to help the veterinarian. So this affects their hearing, vision, smell. If they scratch their ears a lot, if you look for any inflamed tissue, offensive odor, it smells kind of uh, pungent, different smell to it, you guys. It could be black. That, that would be the what? The wax? Or it could be even a discharge. There could be like a pus discharge in it. You got an ear infection. It's extremely painful. I, I seen one dog who had a crusty, thick ear one time. And there is no way I was going to train this dog. Absolutely no way I was going to train him if he had an ear infection that regardless of what I did, it could cause pain. So if your dog has an ear infection, you better secure him during this fireworks. If he has got acute ear infections, happens all the time. Come on, people, figure out how to fix this. Let me tell you really quick. Good diet of food, if you have a question, send me a message, a good quality of food to feed to avoid the food issues with your ears. Second thing, dogs with floppy ears are, are more prone to ear infection than dogs with ears that come up. Why? What happens is when the dog uh, ears are flop down, it doesn't allow the ear to get air in there to dry it out. So you get moisture in there. Moisture will turn into an infection. So when they're puppies, if you have dogs with floppy ears, when they're puppies, teach them to get their ears up and flop them over so you can circulate air in there. Do not let the fungus grow inside there. Don't let, don't let anything grow in your dog's ear. 
I've had situations where people didn't know that they had something inside the dog's ear. Now, how do I know that? When they come in my facility, if I see them shaking their head more than normal, I'm going to check their ears. Certain dogs who are predisposed to um, ear infections, I would check their ears. I had a, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever in uh, yesterday. I, first thing I did is I checked his ears. So there's certain dogs that I will check. Oh, as they're talking to me, they will say, oh, my dog loves swimming, Hector. I'm checking her ears before I train. I lose money that way because I can't train that day with that dog. So I lose money, but I gain integrity and I'm looking out for the dog's well-being. I won't get very good results anyways. It, does, it reflects on my training. So why would I do it? I'd rather lose the money than have something negative happen to the dog or have the training reflect back on me. So an ear infection, very important. Shaking their head more than normal. Darkness or pus. Redness. Make sure, make sure they check the inside of the ear, not just the outer ear. And look inside. I, t I told my vet one time, look inside his ear, would you please? I need you to look inside his ear, not just the outer, in there. I fly with my dog. I don't want him to have an ear infection and have an issue. I don't want him to hear a loud noise if I do gunfire with him. So very important. All right. Body language that we need to know. What is normal body language that we need to know so we can address it? We know what normal body language is. Normal resting body language. Mouth open, relaxed, almost look like they're smiling. You won't know what nervous body language is if you don't know normal body language. You need a reference point to body language. And normal body language is the reference point that you want. All right? Very important. Now, let's talk about nervous body language. And you can attach some fear to this also. Why do you want to know both of this body language? to de determine if your dog has an issue with fireworks. You'd be surprised how many people tell me, oh, my dog doesn't have a problem. I'd be at the fireworks show and I would see dogs trembling and the owner's like, oh, he's fine. He, he's just getting used to this. Oh, he's fine. He's not afraid. Oh, he's okay. He does this all the time. No, it's not okay if I see them pacing back and forth in the house. No, it's not okay if I see them sweating from their paws when they're hearing fireworks. No, it's not okay if they're trembling, if they're impulsive, if they're causing self-harm, if they're defecating or urinating during a thunderstorm or during the fireworks. That's not good, people. If they run and hide somewhere and shiver, that tells us they're nervous. If their eyes are wide open, if their eyes are wide open, meaning that very delayed in their blinking. If they're delayed in blinking, that tells you that they are fearful and they're times of relaxing. So that's the body language that you want to know that your dog is what? Not doing very well with fireworks. You have to know the body language to differentiate between a normal body language and the nervous body language. If you have a camera out there, if, you, if you're watching through the cameras, you will know, uh, hold on a second, sometime, there you go. If you're watching through an indoor camera, now you know what to look for. Now, I know, now you know what to look for. So it's nice to have indoors cameras so you can see your dog's body, body language. My dog is fearful of a lot of things. Uh, Sabrina Woodruff, um, I, ha I still have to make a show on fearful dogs, but this is going to help you. I'm going to talk about fear and how to handle the dog in the face of fear. So pay attention. This is going to help, Sandra. Uh, Sabrina, excuse me. Sabrina, my dog has floppy ears. My vet gave me an ear wash that I use once and twice a month. More if he gets wet that helps prevent ear. Yes, there are some wipes that you can get, uh, Kelly. Um, make sure they're not Q-tips. Like, like you said, they should be wipes. Just wipe them out clean them out. I do it. I do it regularly with my dog as needed. I look, I check his ears and I make sure, especially if I'm going uh, on a flight, I make sure he has no ear issues. 
I make sure he, he's, he's got normal body language. I don't want him to have nervous body language. And then, and then we're going to talk about how to decompress a dog afterwards. Sabrina, this will help you, all right? Some natural remedies. Before, before we go in, oh, excuse me, no. Let's go into, um, Sabrina, since you brought that up, let's go into um, what do we do when they're afraid? So fireworks go off. You can't control your environment because you're in the city. You can't control your environment because your neighbor decided to go and just shoot off some, some uh, fireworks. One of the things that I did when I lived in Flint, I would tell my neighbors, hey, if you're shooting off some fireworks, will you let me know? This is when I was home. When I wasn't home, I did something else with my dogs, all right? I made sure they were in a crate, and I, if, if he were afraid, I made sure they were in a crate, and I made sure they were comfortable. But anyways, but during the day, I would tell him, if you're going to shoot off fireworks, just let me know. Just give me some professional courtesy, neighbor courtesy. Um, sometimes they didn't, sometimes they did. Um, but anyways, one of the things I did is I made sure, Sabrina, that I stayed silent during their fear. He doesn't like loud noises, his bark and, and rainwater water bottles. So what you want to do is make sure, Sabrina, that he doesn't have any medical issue like we talked about. No ear infections to start with. Now, in the face of fear, it is important while these fireworks are going off that you're not coddling these dogs. Why? Two things happen when you coddle them. You reward the behavior you're trying to extinguish. And two, you're teaching them to be dependent on you in the face of fear. In other words, to soothe them and relax them. Both do not help the dog build his confidence if that's your goal. Both do not help your dog get confidence. All right? Do not touch him. Leave him alone. Now, don't say anything in the face of fear. Whatever you say can be attached to a dog who's fearful. So if you're saying, it's okay, buddy, it's all right, that means the dog is afraid. So the dog's going to connect, it's okay, buddy, it's, it's all right, with being afraid. Remember, they hear, they don't listen. They don't know what you're meaning. They just hear your words and attach it to your fear. So Sabrina, in many cases where I've, get, I've gotten dogs, the dogs literally think they're supposed to be afraid when they get touched. Isn't that crazy? Why? Because the owners have coddled them. They're not a human being. They don't lead with emotions. They hear. They don't listen. So do not touch them. Do not coddle them when they're afraid. Disconnect from them. Very, very important. Your goal is to train, to be there, but not soothe them with their mouth open with their mouth open, relax. That's your goal, okay? You want them to feel comfortable. No treats. Why no treats? I have seen more dogs develop fear and get rewarded from fear with treats than I have anything else. I had a dog in, in last week. Soon as the, uh, soon as the owner gave him a treat, the dog shook a little bit. And they're like, why does my dog do that, Hector? I said, because when you were, when the dog was shy, because it was shy when it was a puppy, and she looked at me like I was strange. How did you know? I said, the dog was shy. You use treats to, to try to build his confidence. The dog's not shy or fearful. The dog thinks he's supposed to be this way because you give it a treat right afterwards. No more treats. Just let it go through the learning curve that knowing that fear is something that we can normalize and nothing's traumatic going to happen. Now, if my dog is afraid of fireworks. I'm going to keep the lead on him with me. I am not going to have him loose. Why? Because they're going to learn the pace. They're going to learn to do things destructively that I don't want. So I'm going to have them on a leash. Even worse, if they're loose even outside, somebody blows out a firework, un, uh, un, uh, unexpected Sabrina, and the dog takes off running. And let's hope that you have the updated tags and, and something on the dog, if that. And tags are not going to help you if he gets hit by a car. Tags are not going to help you if he gets stolen. So it's very important to have him on a leash in these trying times if you know your dog is 
very, very alert to fireworks. Have them on a long leash in your yard, but have them on a leash. Have them on a leash, okay? Very, very important. And don't forget the maturity age, right? They go through a fear stage between five and seven to eight months. Right around there is a reference point. Very careful what happens to them at that age. So if you have a dog between five and seven months right now, and we're coming up on July, make sure that you don't put him in the fireworks, even though you might think he's okay. Don't set him up to fail. Wait till next year to do this, all right? Wait till next year to do this. Very, very important. Um, do not expose them around people or dogs if they're afraid and fireworks are going off. Why? If they're nervous and they're afraid and there's a lot of people are going around, what are the chances of dog biting somebody? Pretty high, isn't it? Why? Because when the dog is afraid or nervous, he's going to bite impulsively. Even a nice dog. Even a lab. Even a golden retriever. Even a dog who's not predisposed to bite, to be aggressive. He can still bite because what happens with fear is that they hold it in, they internalize it, and then what? They blow up. Then they blow up, and that blowing up could be aggression, or it could be destructive behavior. We talked about excessive digging, excessive chewing, excessive barking. Those are the destruct digging. Those are all destructive ways to handle stress. Humping, hyperness, those are all destructive ways to handle stress. So you don't want, I mean, I, I'll give you a little bit of a, you don't want this to happen. If they're, if they're internalizing stress, from fireworks, this is the stuff that's gonna happen. This is the blowback from it. And uh, aggression, you don't want, if your dog is afraid of fireworks, don't take him to the, to the fireworks show. He's gonna bite somebody unpredictable. Don't take him to places like that where you could set him up to fail. Don't do that. It's very, very ba a bad idea. Now, a good crate, a good crate, let me turn off my phone. A good crate to have is the metal one. I prefer the metal one. Why? Because they can't get out. Now, when I say metal, I say the bottom left or the top, uh, top left hand corner. Those two that I prefer, if I know my dog's really afraid of fireworks or in, in, so, in, in some cases, thunderstorms. Why? They can still they can still escape if they're in a crate or if they're in the, uh, the uh, cage type. So if he's really bad, I'd put him in the, the, uh, the, cage, the big, thick cage because they can get out. Now, there's been many times where dogs have gone through windows, gone, jumped over fences, jumped just to get away. So if you have crates like this, they won't get away. Now, the caveat to those crates is that the dog could now internalize stress and start self-mutilating itself. It could start hurting itself, and you don't want to do that. So what I mean by that is it could start doing some of this stuff inside there, and you don't want that to happen. It could start doing stuff inside there. You definitely don't want the dog to go through this stuff if, if it's doing that. So make sure that if you do use one of these crates that you have your camera or you watch how they handle stress. If they start cutting themselves or chewing themselves, watch out, all right? Then that means they're gonna have to be put on some medication and we'll talk about that, all right? We'll talk about some medications, uh, some medical information. Uh, it's clear that I'm not qualified to talk about how or prescribe medicine, but I can give you some information. Very, very important. Um, I, I, I commented on, a, on a, uh, a college veterinarian last year about uh, some of the things that they do that I didn't like. And I was really, really tried. They really tried to really nail me. Like, well, you should know ahead of time whether that procedure needs to be done or not. Listen, if that's the case, then I don't have a lot of integrity in where I'm taking my dog. It is very important that I do know something about what to do, but 
we leave it up to the professionals to make sure, is this a test that's really needed or are you just trying to take money away from me? Does it really need it? Can, it be, can you do this without it? And this, one of the things you, this is why you got to find a good ethical vet. So they don't nickel and dime you with every test because they don't need it. Get, you get a vet with a good experience, he's already going to know. Already going to know. No, we don't need that. No, we don't need that. All we need is this. So this, this is very important. I'll give you a little bit of information, but I'm also going to give you some um, home remedies that can help you. Some over-the-counter suggestions that's going to help you when the dog is extremely helpful. Now, uh, let me read really quick. Crate, in case it's in a fight or flight issue, fear can cause a reaction. Yes, yes, it can, uh, Tina. And this is why you want to secure the dog in a crate. Now, I'm glad you said this. When, my, when I used to put my dog in the crate, when he was a puppy, until he was about a year and a half old, Malo, I would shove a bunch of blankets in there, bunch of blankets, and made it look like it was just full. If he was afraid, then what would happen is I would soothe him with the blankets. I wouldn't do it with my touch. You know as well as I do, when a dog's afraid, he runs under the table, he runs under a chair, he runs under something. They do it naturally. They do it naturally, all right? So what happens is when you do it in a crate, it soothes them, but they do it on their own. Now, the only thing I would be careful about, well, there's a few things. One, self-mutilation. Two, them chewing on the, um, on the blankets because you don't want them to chew it and then eat it because then they're going to get a blockage. So if they do, have a bl if they do uh, are subject to eating things when they're stressed or nervous, then nothing goes in there and you just make, the, make sure the crate is not too big. You want to make the crate a little smaller than, than usual so he doesn't move around so much. You might have to put some, um, some uh, cinder blocks in there to make it smaller. Or you might have to put something on top to make it uh, shorter. So just make sure that it's not too big. Make it small. But if they don't chew, then blankets and sleeping bags are good in there to soothe them. Not your touch. Not treats. Teach them to soothe themselves. Very, very important. Common treats natural will help my dog a lot. We'll talk about that, Sabrina. Yes, we're talking about that. Uh, Tori, so do I just sit there with 200 pounds of dogs on me, three dogs, and put them in crates or, or try to get as close as they can every time? Um, I would put them on a leash, and what I do is put them on a down command next to me. Now, you have three dogs, and you only have two legs. So uh, try to put one on verbal and the other one's on the down command. We're going to talk about how to decompress them towards the end because they're going to go through stress. They're going to go through stress. But keep them on the lead. Don't let them, don't let them learn to pace and, and teach them that's how you calm yourself. Don't do that. Don't let them learn to, to chew on things to calm themselves. Don't let them learn to bark excessively to calm themselves. You want to learn to, you want to rely on your obedience to keep them calm. Rely on your obedience to keep him calm. Uh, that's my fear. When he's afraid, his instinct is to run. He's always on the tie out, and he does have tag. Yeah. Oh, Sabrina, good, good, um, good tidbit. Um, if you can't watch him, put him on a tie out or a, a, um, a uh, the, the run thing. All right. Uh, put him on either one, but make sure they're tethered because they could take off and have fun getting them back. All right. So or. You know, again, they can get hit by a car, stolen, or something like that. So, very important. Uh, microchip does help. Yes. Yes, it does help. Make sure I didn't miss any question. Uh, nope. Oh, hold on a minute here. Nope. I got everybody. So, we talked. We already talked about some, some ways to, to calm them. Keep them on a lead. Don't allow them to pace and go back and forth. If you have to go to work, put them in a crate. Don't just let them loose. Get an indoor camera to watch them if you want. Look at what nervous body language is. What is normal body language? Okay, now what is nervous body language? Very important to know that stuff. Uh, let's see here. Make sure. Oh, we don't go, go into that one. Hold on. Give me a second here. Make sure I covered it. Thunder shirts. Eh. I'm, you know, there was a big narrative that they work. I just haven't seen it. Um, I just haven't seen it in my arena. They could. 
My opinion is if my dog needed it, I'd just put one of my shirts on him and just tighten it. But I haven't seen them work. Um, again, if they do work, that's a bonus for you because you're not touching them. Something else is touching them. Something else is calming them, right? They want to be touched in the face of that. But again, putting them in a crate with a bunch of stuff just soothes them just like a thunder shirt does anyways. So, so it, it doesn't matter. Um, distract your dog with tasty treats was one suggestion that I had. I say absolutely not. Remember, if your dog's afraid of a loud noise and you can give him a treat right before the loud noise, he's going to think a treat, the loud noise makes him fearful and rewarding the loud noise with a treat. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I, I seen a very good hunting dog that was ruined because of that. All right. And he had very good nerves, but he thought he was supposed to be re, uh, or, uh, afraid because he got a treat right after the loud noise and it just startled him initially. And then the owner just worked it up. I seen it in the video, very gradual video. I wish I had permission to show it, but pretty good hunter. And he, he thought he using treats would get his dog to be better, but you know what he didn't do? You know what he didn't do? He didn't check the dog's ears. The dog's had an ear infection. He thought his dog was bad, bad genetics. It had a bad ear infection. I would never even expose him to gunfire or uh, th uh, fireworks if he had a, a bad ear infection. All right. So don't forget about that. All right. Uh, let's see. I got to make sure I, I do everything here. We're going to decompress them. Let's say they're stressed out from the fireworks. Now, if you don't decompress them, what's going to happen after the 4th of July? or after all the fireworks are gone, after, let's say the month of July, what's gonna happen in August? I'm gonna get a lot of dogs who have been, who bite unpredictable. I'm gonna get a dog, I'm gonna get uh, owners who call me and say, my dog's excessively digging. I'm gonna get owners who say, my dog is extremely hyper. I'm gonna get owners who say, my dog barks a lot. I'm gonna get owners that say, my dog's starting to hump a lot. Why? Because all those are indicators that your dog is stressed out and you haven't relieved this dog's stress properly. So then what am I going to tell the owner, especially with these dogs who become aggressive, dogs who are predisposed to be aggressive and they become more aggressive after the, uh, the, um, the month of July. Why is that? Because they're stressed. You haven't decompressed them. We have to decompress them. One of the ways to decompress them is with play is with play. Dogs want to be treated like dogs. Get them out there playing. Now, when is the best time to get them out playing in the month of July? You know they're going to be stressed, so you get them out playing during the day. What are the chances of somebody shooting fireworks during the day? Yes, it does happen. I know it happens, but what are the chances? They're much lower. So on a long leash, get them out there playing with a ball, Get them out there playing frisbee. Get them out there doing tug of war. Get them out there relieving the stress that the night's going to cause. That the, the, the month of July is going to cause. You guys, you'll be surprised how many, how many videos I'm going to share after the month of July on how to decompress a dog physically and mentally. I'm going to be sharing it a lot. Yesterday, I shared my videos. I think it was 10 people. Just email. Here, watch this. Here, watch this. So it's very, and I got an email this morning. It helped. The dog, dog's fine now. And then I talked about body language. So make sure you decompress your dog mentally and physically. How do you do it mentally? With play. How do, with play. That easy. That's how you do it mentally. Now, oop, let me go back here. How do you do it? Physically, and how do you know if it stretches like this in the morning after the fireworks have gone off, you know where the stretch is. You know where the stress is. Very, very important. Uh, just normal plan. Normal plan, uh, Jazz, would be playing with a ball playing with a tug, running after a ball, that's normal playing. You have, a, you, have a, you have a predator. You have a King Corso. You have a predator. So you want to 
keep the object on the ground to mirror the dog killing something. But it, I'd rather have it be an object than another dog, than a person. Do you see how you're teaching to relieve your dog's stress with an object? That's what you want. You know the fireworks are going to cause stress. So then decompress them physically and mentally. All right? You're going to know how to do it with the stretches like I just showed you. Your, your dog is going to go through stress, and you're going to know where to target the, the, uh, the massage. Let me, uh, let me answer a few questions. Hold on a second. I really want to set something up for you to check out. I, I will, Sabrina. We'll set, give me a text. Uh, Tia Hicks, is it okay if they prefer to hide in the bathtub rather than, ooh, good question. She will try to uh, break out of the crate but doesn't chew or panic in the tub. Hey, Tia Hicks, uh, thank you for, for saying that. You're right. Uh, Tia Hicks' dog goes into the bathtub um, because she feels safe there. That's fine. That's perfectly fine because you're right. Maybe she doesn't like being uh, enclosed in a crate um, or, or they, you haven't really introduced a crate. And they do that either or. I'm not saying that you didn't do that. But some dogs feel safe inside the tub. You're right. It's funny how we do too during a tornado, huh? <laughs> Anyways, the dogs, the dogs. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Tia. Uh, our dog is terrified of fireworks and she pants and trembles every night during the summer. Uh, let's see here. Hold on a second. She now associates nighttime with fireworks and starts shaking and panting every night. You're right. Isn't that something how they make a connection? So what I would do, what I would do in your issue, Heather, is right around six or seven, start walking your dog, decompressing your dog, massage him. I'm going to show you a video on how to massage him. I, I wouldn't do play because your dog won't play at that, at that time. But get him walking. Get that blood circulating because they're internalizing stress. So that would be a good time to go for a walk with them on a good leash, on a collar that won't slip over their neck. So you might use a martingale um, or a slip collar or, um, or kennel lead even so they don't slip out of it. But get their body moving about that time. Get them to reassociate it with walking, relaxing. You're going to decompress them physically. And then ultimately you're going to decompress them mentally. But your dog is, is predisposed to internalize stress. And it's not very forgiving. So you have to. And I'm telling you, you have to do this in conjunction with some supplements and or medication that I'm going to help you with. All right? In conjunction with medication or supplement if you choose either or. All right? But you've got to keep them walking. Uh, uh, she keeps up until 10 p.m. Uh, I, I would definitely suggest that you walk and you decompress your dog physically. There are people shooting off fireworks in Lansing on almost nightly basis from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Thanks for... All right. I gave you a few suggestions, but in your case, Heather, uh, Heather uh, Contrary, I'm going to also suggest you to contact your vet. Your dog's got to be miserable if he internalizes stress in, in, in those times of the year. So maybe a medication, a long-term medication. Now, the medication that I'm going to suggest today... and and the supplements are situational, not long-term. You need a long-term medication. I don't, I don't have those on here, but you need a long-term medication to, to, to go over that. Or talk to your vet that will give you something long-term, like uh, the, the, dog, uh, the dog Prozac, or very important, long-term. Or there's another one that you can do long-term. Um, so... Go, maybe talk about that. That's too much internalized stress for a dog or a person, for that matter, or a person. Uh, our special toys, uh, Jazz, whatever to get your dog to get out of that mental block of, of forgetting about what the fireworks and just playing. Your objective is to get your dog really happy so the special toys will work, but you're, you're, he stretches like that every morning. So, Sabrina. I'm going to show you a video, so watch the show here coming up. Watch the uh, video I'm going to show you here pretty soon. Watch the show. I'm going to talk about the massaging now. Let's talk about massaging. Sabrina, you're going to massage your dog. You're going to massage your dog like this. You're going to massage your dog like this so 
if the stress is in the shoulders, that's where you're going to do it. You can have them on a chair or on the ground. I prefer the chair because it opens up the shoulder blades. Then you're going to massage the shoulders right there. It will be the lax right there. Those are the lax. Then with your dog, you're going to turn his head, Sabrina, and you're going to massage that area. Well, I'll answer your question here, Heather, in a minute. You're going to massage that area right there, Sabrina. Get inside that shoulder blade. Yes, I'm yelling. Get inside that shoulder blade. Two hands. Your dog's mouth should be open. When you get done, it should shake his whole body. That tells you that you relieve the stress. Then you're going to get back here. Heather, if your dog puts the brakes on, get right there. You got to decompress him physically, Heather. Of course she puts the brakes on. She's physically stressed. Massage those shoulders. Mouth should be open. Relax. Going back and show you some more video of this. Get the shoulder blades. Mouth should be open. If you have a dog with a big head, with a lot of muscle around the head, like a, a Staffy or a King Corso uh, or a Bulldog, you want to massage their head, top of their head and their jaws. Go back to my replay on how to decompress a dog physically. Very important. Massage the lap muscles. Massage. If the dog is fearful, Heather, he's going to tuck in, tuck in the, the body. It's completely stressed. Do it back there. Do the abs. I call those abs back there because they tighten up. Massage that area. In very rare cases, I'll have you massage the bicep of the dog, which it's the forearm of the dog. Um, so it would be, it'd be right here of the dog. That's their bicep. Their tricep is, is up by their shoulder. That's their bicep. So why? I had a three-legged dog in my class in my one-on-one -on -one last week. Uh, and we had to massage that area. It was really amazing that a three-legged dog had no stress other than its bicep. It learned to balance its body perfect. It was amazing because the dog was five. I anticipated stress, but it didn't. Only had it in the forearm. So very, very, very important to figure out where this stress, where this stress is on your dog to decompress it. Heather, uh, if she won't walk, she hits the brakes and only heads to the direction of home. You got to make her walk. Now, if she doesn't want to walk away from home, then walk in your backyard. Walk around your house. But the objective is just to walk her. Not really walk her and go for like a rec recreational walk. Go for just a decompress walk where you walk. We do it with people too. I do it with people too. Nothing wrong with that. So very, very important, you guys. Get out there and walk with them if they're afraid. Decompress them mentally, physically, and go for a nice, gentle walk with them. Doesn't have to be anywhere particular. Dottie Stevens, you're on here. Thanks for watching, Dottie. I hope you're taking it easy. I hope you're taking it easy. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome, Heather. Sabrina, uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that, uh, Sabrina. We'll talk about that uh, late, but we'll catch up on watch. You betcha, uh, Kristen Foster, no problem. I, I just, uh, I know that you're helping a lot of people with this suggestion. I know already. All right, let's look up some natural remedies. Some natural remedies. Wait a minute. Let's go back to my tips to help. If, you're, if you leave the dog alone, remember the crate or like, um, like Tia said, maybe the bathroom is going to be a good place in the tub. Loud music. Try to drown out the loud thunderstorms. Try your best to drown it out. I'm not saying that you're not going to do it 100%, but try to drown, drown it out. Leave the TV on. Um, or, worst comes to worst, if your dog's really bad, maybe hire a dog sitter or a family member. Uh, I prefer a dog sitter. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, I love my family, but I just prefer a dog sitter. Uh, it's their job, and they're a little more diligent to it. Uh, so anyways, I would do that if that happens. Uh, or maybe a, um, a, uh, a dog pl a place where they will watch your dogs. There's a lot of dogs, and they'll keep the dogs all busy while the fireworks are going off. Or in one case, I, had a, I, I told an owner, 
the, sent them out to the country. There was a, there was a place that, that dogs sit out in the country, way out in the country, where there's no fireworks. Just removed everything out, and they just kept the dog away from it, and it was fine. It was perfectly fine. Uh, so let's do some natural remedies now. Um, I have to find the, uh, the link here. Uh, here it is. So four fireworks. This is four fireworks. We have uh, Benadryl, melatonin, melatonin, and CBD oil. Nothing wrong with these natural supplements. Melatonin is a, na is a natural supplement. It's good. And look up the dosage. Same with the CBD oil. Same with the Benadryl. Dramamine, yes, I have known for that to work in thunderstorms, excuse me, not thunder, in thunderstorms also, but in fireworks also. Yes. Now, look up the right doses for Dramamine because there is some um, a side effects if you do too much Dramamine. So make sure you get the right dosage. It, it can cause sleepiness, which that's what you want as a side effect. A dry mouth and difficulty urinating. Uh, it, they can do that with some dogs, but it has helped. It has helped. CBD oil to calm and relax them, melatonin, and Benadryl. Those are the four that I recommend situational because this is going to be situational. For your dogs who are fearful, uh, either genetic or environmentally, you might have to do a medication, all right? And that's going to be my next suggestion. Hold on, I got some uh, questions here. Thank you. Effectively call her the tub dweller. <laughs> Tia? Oh, that's funny. That's funny, Tia. Our pepper has touch, touch aversion to certain body parts. Um, Vicky, um, send me a video of that. Because again, I've known dogs who have been stressed around their shoulders right here who didn't want you to touch them in, other, in another part of their nervous body system. So you really have to really decompress them physically because if they have a kink neck right here, they're not going to want you to touch their neck because if they, they have a bunch of knots on their neck. If they have a, a really tight back here, they're not going to want you to touch that. It's painful. It's painful. So you got to massage the dog to take some of that stress away. This is why when dogs get older, 9, 10, I make sure if they come in to see me, the first thing I'm going to do is massage them. If the owner tells me that their dog suddenly got aggressive and he's 9 or 10, I send them to my how to decompress a dog physically. It could be that way. So you really, you really have to. My dog's not afraid of gunfire or... Yeah, I, I, Marty, I know your dog's not afraid of gunfire or explosion. Uh, he's a shepherd, but he could. But look at the body language. My dog's not afraid neither, but it, my dog stresses out in time. My dog's not afraid neither, but he stresses out in time. He closes his mouth. His body becomes tight. So that means I have to massage and relax him and decompress him to make sure that stress doesn't carry, that that stress doesn't carry over, and then it turns destructively later on. So I have to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, make sure. All right. So uh, I, I showed you them. Let me go into my, this is my last page. I'm running. I got, it's going to go over an hour, but I don't care. Uh, all right, so the Dramamine stuff, it could include diarrhea, vomiting, and lack of appetite. Remember, always look at the side effects to, to a supplement and or a medical drug because they could, you could, their dog could have those issues. There's many times where people call me and I'll say, is he under any medication? Yes. Is that one of the side effects? I don't know. Okay, look it up. Something about the internet makes it really easy. So we'll look it up, and sure enough, that was one of the side effects of the dog. So very important, if you give your dog a supplement, if your dog starts getting a mind-altering drug, whether it be for situational purposes or long-term purposes, make sure you know the side effects. Come on, people, shouldn't we know them about ours? I was taking the supplement that was making me tired all day. And then I looked at the side of it. Oh, darn it. I got to stop taking that supplement. So very important to know the side effects of all of them. Now, if you're doing any medical, I got to look for the, uh, do, 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 
Do the Give me one second. I have to look for. I know I have them. I know I put them in here. The uh, the medicine. Oh, here they are. Boy, I'm getting slow. Um, there's going to be some medicine that can help you situational. But again, get with your vet. They're qualified to tell you which medicine to use. They're qualified to give you the medical advice. I'm just here to provide some information for you so you, you're aware of it. That's it. That's all my sole job to do is to provide you information. All right? Very important. Now, they will tell you, and they should, if they're doing anything medical, that they need to have what? They need to make sure that, there's, that, there's, uh, that they do a blood check and they do a physical examination before they prescribe some type of medication. Oh, they might not even know your dog, all right? But they're gonna, in some cases, they might want a blood work done, in some cases. So, so again, go get, seek medical attention. You're gonna get medical advice. Count on them to give you some sound medical advice, all right? I'm here just to provide you some medical information, some medical information. Let's talk about some of the medical information that I can give you. And again, this is situational. You have a Silio, approved for storm phobia in dogs. This is re relatively gentle and has also been a, a, a boon to some travelers, so it does help. It seems to make him care, care less about noises and other sensations while keeping them from being too dopey or too sleepy. I like this one. I like this one, but I'm not a vet, but I've seen, I've heard some great results with this one, all right? S-I-L-E-O, very, very good one, all right? I just gave you, I'm going to read a little bit more. It is a medicine prescribed by your veterinarian. It helps calm your dog when frightened by loud noises around your home without making them drowsy. It's the first of its kind, they say. And it's FDA approved treatment for, for noise aversions in dogs. So try, ask your vet for this one. It's a good one. All right, uh, hold on there, Cheryl. I'll get to you here in just a minute. Oh, hey, Hector, can you please shout out? I, I will, give me one second. I wanna do that, I wanna do that solo. Here's another one, all right? It's Xanax for dogs, the Aplazonum. Xanax, it's a volume, okay? These can be very effective, by, by, but the dose can, be, can vary widely. As with many drugs, trial and error is often required to get the dosing right. So it could let, see, so what I mean by this is make sure you do this before the fireworks occur, not, not after. So you want to you wanna, uh, do the trials before so you can look at the adverse reaction or get the right dose of those dogs, which is why it's still around, all right? It's used to sedate the dog. Its side effect may include aggression. Look at that. There's many dogs who've come to me and they're on this medication and they've all of a sudden become aggressive. I said, do you know the side effects of that? And they're like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize it. You gotta know the side effects to that, people. Uh, include aggression and, and, and pretty pronounced doping, uh, dopiness, which can last for more than a day. That's the side effects. Because less problematic methods are now available, this drug is not as frequent prescribed as it one, once was. So, but this is a this is a one. Your vet might your vet might be good at the medication it's prescribed, but I'm just giving you some suggestions. You want to be knowledgeable about this. You want to be knowledgeable about this. All right. And then you have trazodone, like someone said, used commonly as a mild tranquilizer. Uh, this is safe and effective sleep-inducing agent. Works great for dogs, too. Humans, too, huh? Most dogs don't get too dopey on it. Yeah, they don't. I, I've used it on dogs before just to get, get them over uh, a, a, uh, a stress of being with me, of being with me, all right? But, but it does. But so far, my, my one that I like the most is the first one, all right? Silio, that's the best one. And then you have... The, uh, you have two more. 
uh, Antipatrillion. Boy, I'm going to slaughter these names. But you get it here. You, you, it's on here. All right. It has been around for many years and is inexpensive option as a sleep aid. And, uh, commonly used off-label to treat insomnia. So it, it works good. It works good, people. But these are just some, draw, some drugs for suggestions. And then you have the one that I, the, the one that's FDA approved too, aside for the one that was just approved, is, is, is Pixen too. Uh, Pixen. It, it's currently only approved to treat phobias and noise aversions in dogs and has a calming effect. So those are two that I like as a trainer is the first one, uh, Sileo, and then this one here. Those are the two that I like. I'm not a vet, but those are the two that when I get dogs who are afraid and the vet has prescribed these and then we train, they work great. They work great. All right, that goes that one right there. Let me answer a few questions here. Uh, yes, your dog uses... Uh, uh, Cheryl Smith, your dog uses some, some, uh, some CBD oil. Works well. I'll try Dramamine for stress. You'd be surprised if you use that Dramamine off-label for other things, how it works. Um, it, it's just amazing. And Peyton Wilson, I hope you're watching. You're a trainer in Utah. I hope you're watching. If you have any questions, you give me, you give me, a, uh, give me a message. Uh, I think my last show... My questions and answers, I had about three trainers around the country uh, that asked me questions just to qualify what I said a little bit more. There's nothing wrong with that. And then I asked them questions. Remember, I'm going to learn from you too, and you're going to learn from me. This is the whole objective of me doing shows, is we learn from, all each, from each other. From, or learn from each other. We want to be better trainers. We can't be better trainers if we hide our secrets. I can't be a better trainer if I don't give my information out there. So I, it's out there. It's out there. It's all out there for you, people. All right. Uh, remember, remember, I am on at 7 o'clock tonight. Remember that. So if Peyton Wilson's not watching right now, she can watch at 7. Tell her, Cheryl. Uh, anyways, I use CBD oil too. Very good. I think the number one issue that people have with fireworks is not decompressing their dog mentally or physically. I, those are the two big reasons that I would say that we develop issues. Now, there might not be anything you can do about your dog not liking fireworks. Maybe the medication doesn't work like you want it to. Maybe you can't, maybe you can't put it in a crate, but you got to remember to decompress your dog physically and play with them during the day when there's no fireworks going off to decompress them mentally, walk them around the house, around the, around the backyard, around the, uh, outside of the house, but walk them, get that blood flow moving, but decompress them in areas where they develop stress. Get to know who your dog is, not what it is. How does it stretch after it wakes up in the morning? How does it stretch after a nap? Okay, that's where the stress is accumulated. That's where I need to focus my, tension, my, my stress tension off on the dog. So very important. I'm glad that Patrick is not afraid to, at all. Husband shoots guns around him, power wash a lot more. He actually loves the fireworks. Well, your dog's got good nerves, Tanya. Why do you think, why do you think we had an issue with him in training? Now, Tanya. If your dog develops an ear infection, then he hears a loud noise, could he now develop a fear of fireworks? Yes. Yes. It can happen later on. This is why I focus so much on ear infection. It affects their hearing. It affects their taste of smell. It affects their sight. It affects their smell. It affects their taste. Come on, people. It's very important that we make sure our dogs don't have an ear infection in the face of this uh, fireworks. Uh, Sabrina, I'm trying to work with my dog to not be afraid of things. He's literally afraid of everything. Holes, lawnmowers, seemingly everything that moves. Sabrina, you might, you might entertain the thought of talking to your vet of putting him on some medication. Now, the medication is just a tool. 
you still got to do some training to get to get through those. So let's say, for example, your dog's afraid of the vacuum cleaner. Medication and then obedience around the vacuum cleaner. All right? Obedience. I didn't say treats because if you use treats, have fun. You get it wrong, you're stuck. It's going to be hard to get them out of it. So, but very important, don't touch them, remain neutral, let them soothe themselves through it, focus on body language to determine whether, the, whether it's fixed or not. Focus on body language to determine whether it's fixed or not. That's why you need to know normal body language. That's why you need to know normal body language. Uh, the meds you listed are only by vet. Yes, the supplements you can get over the counter, the, 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 uh, the medicine is for vet, only vet approved. Only vet approved. You're awesome, Hector. Thank you. For, you're welcome, Tori. I love that, Tori. I appreciate you, Tori. Uh, I appreciate you. Wow, thank, thank you. So good to know. You're welcome, Tanya. This is why it's important to know, to know your dog. What else could interfere with your dog's um, uh, uh, being very sensitive to noise? It's teeth, cracked tooth, uh, uh, abscess. Oh, my goodness. Have I ever looked in a dog's mouth in my training facility? you damn right I have. I had a dog who walked in with aggression issues. Never had any issues. And it's, I look, I observed the dog and its jaw was swelling. I said, can you open his mouth? Man, they had a huge abscess. They never bothered to look in there. So again, you have to, well, as a trainer, take a second to observe the dog. If it's issues that it's not normal for the dog, you as a homeowner, Take a second to look, observe the dog. Is it, what's normal, what's not? Don't you wanna do that with your loved one too? Your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter? You wanna do the same thing. Right now, well, last night I missed my daughter, I had to call her, <laughs> I had to hear her voice, Melina. And then today I gotta hear Brianna's voice. So <laughs> that's just how I am. Anyways, but you gotta get to know who your dog is, who your significant other is, not what. The ear infection, the toothache, some of that stuff can really affect your dog's ability to handle stress and it's gonna cause an adverse reaction. Um, over, can you over decompress, uh, Kristen? Yes, uh, yes you can because you have to allow the muscle to, um, to recover. So in my show I talk about how to decompress a dog one every three to five days. Don't do it every day because you're gonna cause some bruising. Give the dog, just like with us, we need time. In some cases, the first massage just kind of loosens the fascia, the, the, skin, the skin between the, the, the tension between the skin and the, and the muscle. In some cases, you're just doing that and then you can do a second massage, but in most cases, no, you gotta be careful. Massage once every three to five days. You got to give time for those muscles to recover. You got to give time for those muscles to, to recover. She will come up to us, turn her back to us, and sits waiting for her rubs. Well, you're probably not rubbing very hard, which is good. If you can do it, if you're rubbing soft, I'm sure it won't hurt every day, uh, uh, Kristen. But I'm sure if you did a deep tissue massage like I do, like I do in my facility, I really get those knots out. I tell the owners, don't massage for another couple of days. Don't because it's there. It's gonna hurt tomorrow and that dog's gonna feel good for the next couple of days So just let them recover from that. All right, so very important uh, Let me see. Thank Thanks guys. Awesome. You're welcome Cheryl. You're welcome Cheryl Cheryl Smith Chew with CBD old chunks. I'll tell her yes, and then on some other ones too. Remember you got other options too. have her watch my show I'm gonna put this on YouTube either today or tomorrow or this weekend so, so I'll, I'll have this on there for her to watch. But there's other ones on there too. Uh, I've never been given this info, extremely inform, inf informational. You're, you're welcome, Tanya. This is why I like to make these shows. Um, again, I don't like coddling my dog in the face of fear. I don't like treating my dog in the face of fear. Again, as humans, that's what we do to humans. They're not human, they're dogs. Remember, how they think is different than the way we think. They don't lead with emotions. They lead with instinct. I don't want them to be dependent on my touch. I don't want them to be re, um, 
inadvertently rewarded with a treat if they're afraid of something. They, they don't listen, they hear. I'm going to allow them to soothe themselves their natural way, which is what? The natural way to soothe in yourself is yawning, licking, itching, shaking, falling asleep, and playing in the way that complements their instinct. Those are the natural ways to relieve themselves. If they internalize stress in the face of fireworks, you have to be able to decompress them. Very, very important. If not, that stress is going to build and then they're going to explode. You don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. All right? So we have to know how this stress is, is how your dog is predisposed to internalize stress. How does it handle stress? How do you handle stress? How do you handle stress? No different than how does your dog handle it. Do you internalize stress? If you internalize stress, are you talking to somebody about what you're going through? For a dog, if you're internalizing stress, are you playing with them to relieve that stress mentally? Are you walking for them? Hey, walking for us is good too. So you, now you're starting to get the, to get the understanding on why it's important. You may not be able to help your dog uh, because genetically it's, it's just afraid of fireworks in that moment, but you can decompress them so a problem doesn't evolve from the stress. There's supplements, and then there's medicine that your vet can prescribe. Those two. And then make sure you get to know who your dog is, not what he is. Does it have an ear infection? Does it have a tooth issue? Is it losing its appetite? Are you putting water in his food to help him digest it during this stressful time? That's one thing I didn't mention, and that's one thing you should. Why? Because in the face of fear, it's going to produce more stomach acid. So you want them to digest it a little better. How do you do that? Put water in their food or let it soak a little bit better so their stomach does less work to, to uh, digest it. Maybe put some probiotics in their food to help them digest it. All right, that's what you're going to do so you can help them during these stressful times of fireworks. And then eventually I'm going to make one on thunderstorms. It's going to mirror a lot of what I say today, but some people are just going to want to know a little. There's, there's some variables of thunderstorms, but fireworks, that's, this is it. A good show on fireworks. All right. Smoking a drink. They can't do that, can they? Terry, Tori, they can't do that. Hector Hernandez dog massage parlor. <laughs> Hey, be careful with that one. I can go good or bad. <laughs> Let's put it good in my case. Let's put it good. Uh, but I really, I really, I really wanted, I really can't stress the importance of a massage on a stressful dog. I really can't importance the massage on a stressful person, right? I carry my stress in my lower back, so I, that's where I need it, or I carry it in my hamstrings. And uh, Jennifer did a great job releasing that stress. Okay, Jennifer did a great job from relieving that stress. Uh, good to know, soft rubs, always deep tissue, only when needed. I like that, Kristen uh, Foster. Thank you so much. Let me make sure I got, if I have another question. Uh, ooh, I got one more, but I'm going to answer that one tonight at 7. Uh, I got a few texts. I'm going to answer those at 7. Got some good messages for the text. Um, so, tonight, 7 o'clock, questions and answers. And if you got a suggestion for a show, let me have it. Let me have it. Nancy Izzo, I hope you're watching. You had, a good, you had some good suggestions from, uh, for this show, too. It will, this one will carry over to my YouTube channel. I'll leave it on here, but it will carry over. If you don't have any other questions, we will see you guys at 7 o'clock p.m. Questions and answers. I love you for being here for my fireworks and dog show. Yes, I do care about you. I care about you and I care about your dogs. I want to make sure that you're both happy. <laughs> you're both happy. Don't set your dog up to fail. Back and watch the replay to see if I said anything that, that maybe you, didn't, you missed. Or maybe I like to go back and listen to my, my replays to see what I miss. There are some cases where I miss, and, and some of the time I might have to say something uh, to, uh, to change it. But anyways, 7 o'clock, I rescue a lot of dogs. Ah, Tina, you need to watch my massage video if you do that. 
I rescue a lot of dogs. Main issue are fearful. I'm, oh, you know what, Tina? I'm going to work on my fearful um, body language and fearful show uh, just for you. But give me some time. That's a, that's a loaded one. Um, only because, but my job is when I get a fearful dog is to, is to get it out of it. But you saw, you heard a little bit of it today. Now, with rescue dogs, let me answer, let me answer that tonight at 7, uh, Tina, because I got some good stuff for that tonight at 7, all right? Tonight at 7, I'm going to talk about fearful dogs for Tina. Just touch on them, not too much on it for my show, but just help you in the, in the rescue uh, field, how I can help you with that, all right? Thank you for being here. We'll see you at 7 o'clock tonight. I got some work to do between now and 6.30. Yes, I do. We will see you at 7. Thank you for being here. Everybody, I love you. I hope to see you again.